Hello there all, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to convert the table we created in the last video into a digital asset. Not only that, we are also going to learn how to add in some manipulator handles so that we can interactively change the parameters of the table right there in the viewport. So let's go ahead and get started. Now to get started, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the additional nodes we had in the previous video. And I want to convert this particular table we created into a digital asset. So let's go ahead, right click on this table. And here we have an option called create digital asset. When we click on this, we get a small pop-up dialog, which gives us some additional information we need to plug in. First of them is a unique identifier for this particular table. So let me go ahead, name this something like uh, today's date. So it has a completely unique name. And then I'll go to the operator label and call this table one. So I know which table I'm talking about if I create additional ones. Now, each one of the tables I create or each digital asset I create needs to be saved into a library. And every library can have additional digital assets inside them. So here by default, we save things into the OP custom OTL file. Let's say instead we have architectural assets like beds, door frames, windows, additional things we wanted to save. We can have an additional OTL called the architectural OTL because is a table and I'm talking about architecture, I'll just type in an archi.otl file. Now, when I create a new OTL file, the last option gets enabled, which is do I want to install this particular digital asset I'm creating for only this particular scene or do I want it to be in the scanned OTL directories? What that means is do I want it available in additional files which I might work in? For me, right now, yes, I want this to be available every time I open Houdini. So I'll select scanned OTL directories. I'll hit accept. This might throw a warning sometimes if you have changed any parameters on the nodes. I'll go ahead and tell destroy all spare parameters because I don't have any parameters on the table I want to edit. Once I click this, the actual type properties window opens up, which I'm just going to ignore for now and hit accept. So now I've just gone ahead created a digital asset. It does not have any functionality yet, but we are going to add in all the functionality we want through the type properties. Now that I've finished creating the digital asset, if I want to create another one, I don't always have to copy paste this particular node. What I could do instead is just press tab, go into my digital assets, and there you can see the table one asset is available. I can select that and a new node gets dropped and it looks exactly like the table. But the problem right now is if I wanted to change any of the parameters on this table, I still have to dive into the table, edit the parameters on the control object and come out, which is not very intuitive. So now we are going to see how to add in all the additional parameters and controls we wanted onto the digital asset. To add more functionality into a digital asset, what we can do is go ahead, right click on the digital asset and go select type properties. This opens up a window which looks almost like the parameter editor, but this is for editing digital assets instead. Now, inside this digital asset, we know we had already created this control object which has all of the parameters which I wanted to control on the table. Now, what I can do is directly go into from nodes option under the parameters, navigate to my actual object. So you can see there's a control object. This exists within my object nodes under the table and it's called the control object. So here I'll go to my object network here under the table. I'll go to the control object and you can see all my parameters are listed. So I want to put all of these under a separate group under the root for my actual control object on the table. So to do this first, I'll create a folder. Let me drag and drop it. So I created a folder right before transform. So you can see transform material render are nothing but folders here. So I created a folder here. I'll call it table. And now coming to notes, I'll just copy the control object which I have under the table. So you can see all the parameters have just come in. I'll hit accept. And now I have a table tab with all its parameters listed. And now if I try to change them, you can see it actually works. Now the reason this is working and what Houdini has done in the backend uh, is that it's gone ahead into the node, saw the control object and saw all these parameters which existed. It just copied them straight out from here, put them onto the node and took these properties 
and link them using channel expressions here. So you can see these are nothing but channel expressions which are bringing in the property from there. So if I select my table now and change one of these properties, you can see it actually changes the table itself. But these amount of controls are not actually that great. We want to add in a couple of more controls which we'll see in a little time. But before that, let's take a look at why we want to create digital assets themselves. As you can see, I created a table here. But before that, we had this other table. Now, if I select this table, you can see this table also has the parameters added to it. Let me go ahead and move the table off to a different place. So I'm just moving the table off. And now, if I come back and select this table, go to its table tab and try to change the length, you can see all these parameters directly work. I changed the parameters on one table and the other table automatically updated according to this. So this is the uh, power of having a digital asset. You have a single place you control elements and all of the ones, all your assets get edited accordingly. But make sure you don't change it to such an extent that these stop working. Now. Now that we have gone ahead and created the simple control, I want to be able to create or control this uh, table interactively in the viewport itself. Now, what I mean by that is if I select the table and uh, go to its transform, we know that we can move the object around, that is default. What I want to be able to do is have some manipulator handles in my viewport which can help me change the length, width and height of the table. So to do this, again, I'll right click, go into my type properties. And here, this time, instead of actually editing the parameters, I'll switch over to the handle section. I want to create additional manipulator handles. If you go to the create handle drop down, you can see there are too many different kinds of handles. Uh, for now, I'll just go ahead and create a bounder or a bound handle. What this does is it creates a bounding box handle which you can manipulate in the viewport. And I want to change the scale to be able to edit the actual height, width and length of the table itself. Now this is where changing your parameters name using X, Y and Z axis like the way we have done on this table. If we go here you can see length and width are all named according to L underscore X, Y, Z come into picture. So because I've added these parameters, I'll go to the scale in X take the drop down and select the length which is L underscore X. So yes X is assigned to LX and similarly I'll go yes Y to LY and yes Z to LZ. It just went off screen there. So I've connected these. I'll hit accept and now that I've done this I can select the table make sure my manipulator or select is selected come into my viewport press enter. And when I do this, you can see I have my manipulator handles which come in. They're not aligned center to the object, but they still work. Now I can go select the handles, drag them in any direction, and you can see they interactively edit my table. So I can change the length, width, and not only that, I can also change the height of my table. But if I select the entire gizmo, I can change the entire size of my table itself at one shot. So I just created a digital asset, added in a couple of manipulator handles to this, and set this up. Once I'm done with the digital asset, all I need to do is right click on this and tell match current definition. You can see before I do this, the label on this digital asset is red in color, which means I can dive into the digital asset and change any of the things I want. Once I right click on this and tell match current definition, it's going to uh, lock the digital asset turn the label blue and now I will not be able to dive in and change any of the parameters as you can see everything is grayed out. Now if I go ahead press tab create new digital asset it creates additional tables which I can easily go manipulate and create whatever sizes I want out of. Now, now that we have gone ahead and created this particular table digital asset, in the next video we are going to add in a couple of constraints so when we go ahead and create the table we don't get issues like this where the legs could overlap or the uh, uh, length could have a zero value. So we are going to go ahead and set up some uh, additional check-ins so that Houdini knows when to stop changing the length, width and height of the table and making sure the sliders and different options I have are going to give me realistic tables rather than random ones. So now that's it for this particular video. In here we saw how to create digital asset and we also saw how to go about adding some additional manipulator handles so we can interactively control the digital assets in the viewport itself. 
In the next video, I'll be showing you how to add in some additional controls onto the digital asset and also set in some error correction parameters. So, uh, in the meantime, if you have any doubts, critics, comments or suggestions, please use the comment section below this video. I'll do whatever I can to help you guys out. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.